it's now mid-January. Now, last year was the wettest year on record for England. And basically we had so much rain that the ground became waterlogged. And basically when the rain falls, it had nowhere to go to. So it just sat on the ground. It turned it into mud, not held by the ducks and the chickens churning it all up and indeed ourselves churning it up every time we walked over it. Now, as I said, it's been a relatively dry period since the start of the year. We've had one or two showers, but compared to last year, this has actually worked out to be quite a dry period for us. The problem is the ground is still waterlogged. It's going to stay that way for quite some time to come. So even those light showers that we've had are still sitting causing the rain to sit on the ground turning it into mud so we have a problem here in our chicken run which is particularly wet and what we're going to try and do is blanket over the mud using some of the wood chip that we made last year from when we had our hedge one of our hedges cut down to size it hadn't been cut for about a decade uh, so it had run away a bit with itself it's been cut down that was all chipped and what we're going to do is use that to blanket over the ground, blanket over the mud, to try and keep the chickens off the damp ground. Last October we bought a Tamworth pig, we went straight off to slaughter and we got back a fantastic array of different joints, sausage meat, sausages, bacon and so on. And we always said that what we wanted to do is to swap some of that, that meat with friends who keep other livestock. And a friend of ours sent her lambs off to slaughter a few days ago. The meat's just come back and I've spent the morning doing a bit of a barter with her to get half a lamb and uh, we've got some of it here here's uh, one of the leg joints there uh, really looking forward to having a roast lamb but we also got quite a bit of offal as well but also this is some of the stuff that we got we we're particularly keen to get some of this this is called I think they call it lap so it's not really a joint of anything and it's really just sort of the waste meat that uh, you can't use in any joints but you can use it to make sausage meat now that's great for us because one of my Christmas presents this year was a sausage making machine so sometime soon I'm gonna have a go at making some lamb sausages also I'll try some of the pork to make pork sausages as well and finally we didn't get any uh, chops produced from our pig, but we now have a whole load of lamb chops there. Really looking forward to that. And what I'm going to make to go with these lamb chops is a rosemary jelly. The dry patch at the start of January was destined not to last. By later January, the snows had arrived. Well, since the snow earlier in the week, we've had yet more of it, and tonight we're expecting another downfall as well. So most of the work that we're wanting to do on the allotment has now ground to a halt. Uh, we have a site where we're going to build a shed. We've got the base of the shed built. Unfortunately, the rest of it is still flat pack. There's one little job I can do this morning. We've found that on, in our herb garden, some of the fennel needs to be cut because it's in seed and we can use those seeds in baking and cooking. This is 
some of the belly pork from our Tamworth pig. And what we're going to do is we're going to roast this for our dinner tonight, but in addition we're going to rub in a few extras into the skin there to give it an extra bit of taste. We're going to need a pestle and mortar for this, so put in three small to medium sized cloves of garlic, then uh, some fennel seeds. These are seeds that we grew uh, from our fennel plant in the herb garden, and also from our herb garden is some fresh thyme, just a few sprigs of it, just uh, strip the leaves off like that and we also need a few peppercorns, not too many and then just need to grind all this together and it's after about a minute or so it should be all ground down into this thick paste so that is now ready to use put your meat into a meat tray and then drizzle over it a little bit of olive oil and then get your paste from the pestle mortar and need to rub this into the skin of the the meat like that. And that should be fine. And then put it in the oven at 190 degrees. Well the joint has had half an hour for every half kilo and uh, we're going to find out now whether it's cooked. Oh boy, look at that. Well, yeah, here's the meal itself and with some lovely crackling on, so Absolutely gorgeous. So. Mm. Well, here we are in the greenhouse, blanketed with snow, but I'm pleased to say that it's maintained a temperature above freezing point. So, outside, the ground is frozen rock solid, in here, things are, well it's probably about 3 or 4 degrees centigrade so it's not growing temperature but at least it's not freezing. Now earlier this year, at the, at the start of January, the new year was mild, not particularly warm but it wasn't chucking it down with rain as it was last year. Now I had a pile of onion sets left over from last year that I was not able to plant in the autumn because the ground was just far too wet and we've had some significant uh, flooding problems on the allotment and one of the, our big jobs this year is to get some drainage put in but instead of wasting those onion sets what we've done is I've planted them into seed trays and into chopped up toilet roll holders and Hopefully by the spring these are now growing, these will be growing and we can get them out, planted out onto the allotment. We've got some already planted out under all that snow there which we managed to do in November when we had about a week without rain and the ground was just about dry enough to be able to get them planted. But after that it was raining again and really it just was impossible to get them into the ground. So this is all we've got in the greenhouse at the moment but hopefully soon as temperatures pick up a little bit we'll be able to get on with a bit more work here in the greenhouse. Well last month we swapped some of our Tamworth pork for some lamb. A friend of ours had sent her lamb to slaughter and uh, this is one of the legs of lamb that we got for in that swap. So 
Yeah. It's a Sunday evening, we're in the kitchen, as you can hear, the dishwasher is on and uh, we're going to have our Sunday dinner and today is going to be the first time we're going to use any of the lamb. Now, what you can see on here is that we have pierced it with some of our rosemary and some chopped garlic as well, plus seasoned with some salt and ground black pepper. And that's going to go into the oven and it's going to have half an hour for each pound or 400 and 50 grams. Well the lamb is now cooked, it's out of the oven and uh, this is what we have. So we're going to carve this and uh, we're having it with uh, some of our own artichokes and uh, we're looking forward to this. So there we have it, the final meal. Gravy still to go on, and as you can hear, the dishwasher is definitely on at the moment. Uh, it's the roast lamb with the pureed artichokes in cream, and we have creamed potatoes as well. Well, as you can see, we've got quite a bit of snow on the allotment this morning. And normally when I open up the hen houses, the hens come charging out. But today, they are totally confused. I really don't know what to make of it. Yes, they are, really are quite confused by all of this. Snow certainly hasn't stopped them from eating. So they haven't lost their appetite. So let's see how the ducks get on with the snow. One out. Here yeah, come the rest. Well, just as the hens don't like the rain or the snow, it seems to be the opposite way round with the ducks. Not unexpectedly, I have to add. Yeah, they seem to be quite at home in it. Meanwhile, the beehives are hibernating for the winter. One of the things that we learned early on in trying to become self-sufficient is that we need a decent amount of storage space, not just for equipment, but for our produce as well. Now we've struggled through the last few years by filling our garage until it's at bursting point. We can't go on very much like that any longer. So what we've done is we've invested in a shed and here on the allotment yesterday we started to build it. Well, that's the base now secured, and 
And what we need to do is build the shed on that. And that's the floor now done. Well, that's most of the body of the shed now up. It's got the roof to go. Uh, as you can see, the roof's on, the door's on. Still need to put the glass in the windows. Uh, we need to put the roofing felt on and paint it uh, with preservative. So. That's a job for tomorrow, because we are now starting to lose the light for today. Well, it's the start of day two of the shed building weekend. As you can see, lovely sunny day, almost like spring rather than winter in the middle of February. And you may well be able to hear some sawing going on in the background as David is getting the roof down to size. but. The shed should be finished today, uh, so off to get on with the final jobs. The shed is now completed. There it is behind me. Now, over the past few years, as we've tried to become self-sufficient, not having something like that here on the allotment has really held us back. And if you're going to set out to be self-sufficient, make sure that you sort out your storage space early on in the process. So, with this now in place, hopefully this year we will be able to get that much closer to the self-sufficiency that we've been setting out to achieve over the past few years. At this point in our journey to become self-sufficient there are some things which we just can't produce ourselves and one, one of those is our own flour. Now to be able to become totally 100% self-sufficient we would need to be growing our own wheat. Now maybe that's a job for some time in the future and later this year we'll be having a go at making flour substitutes using acorns and also potatoes. Unfortunately we don't have enough potatoes now to do it because the crops were so poor last year because of the weather that we just can't spare any potatoes. But what we have done is we've taken a decision that anything that is processed we no longer buy from the shops. So if we want bread, although we can buy the flour from the shops at the minute, we can't buy the, the bread itself and we've got to make it and uh, I'm just going to get out of the oven a couple of our loaves which have been cooking away here and oh boy look at that now I've actually glazed it with eggs from our own hens but we've got two little uh, just setting up the smoke along we've got two uh, loaves like that and behind the camera a whole pile of bread rolls as well. Well I'm pleased to say that in the end I didn't manage to set off the smoke alarm in the house here. However, this is one of the loaves that I've uh, just made and if you hear me tapping on it, nice hollow sound to it which means this is definitely ready lovely crisp crust to it as well so really looking forward to trying this out it may be the middle of February but it is actually quite a sunny day and the bees have been stirring so all for the hives that we have up here have been active today Temperature's cooling just a little bit now, but uh, as you can see, they are still active. 
I'm not particularly wanting them to be active at the moment because if they go out foraging there's nothing actually there for them to forage for. Here in the UK in the last few weeks there has been a scandal brewing about horse meat finding its way into pre-processed and ready-made meals they tend to go into beef meals and uh, horse meat is being passed off as beef. Uh, well, in our household we rarely buy pre-processed or ready-made meals. We make our own. We grow as much of our own food as we can. So what we're going to do tonight is have a go at making our own burgers, guaranteed to be horse meat free, using some of the sausage meat from our own Tamworth pig. And what it will do is give us the opportunity to test out this little device, which is a burger maker. Put your sausage meat into a mixing bowl and add into it half a chopped onion and a handful of grated apple and then a couple of handfuls of breadcrumbs and then some garlic this is some of last year's garlic still left over that we've got from the garden and then as a final touch a bit of bit of a splash of cayenne pepper and then all this needs to be scrunched up together that's the sausage meat all mixed up now with the apple and onion and so on and now we need to get our little burger making machine ready and we start off by putting in a wax disc like that. It's very much like the wax discs that we use uh, to put on the top of our jam when we are making preserves. So next job is to put some of the sausage meat into the, this little contraption. And yeah, onto it goes another wax disc and the lid like so. Right, moment of truth time. Apparently I'm supposed to push this up. Here it goes. Off comes the lid. There we go. Our very own Tamworth pork burger. Well, I think I've got the hang of this now. That's uh, four burgers for our dinner tonight. Well, time to put these into the grill. It's absolutely lovely. Mm. Mm, excellent. Mm -hmm. That's it for the midwinter edition of Self Sufficient in Suburbia. Join us next month when hopefully we'll be able to hear the pitter patter of tiny little feet.